Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Since the beginning of time, men have been consumed with a curiosity about their past. The customs, beliefs, and lifestyles of our ancestors are significant signposts along the road leading to the discovery of the origins of man. Man's diligent search for clues to his beginnings has taken us to the far corners of the earth, under the seven seas, and to the burial of ancient civilizations. Engaged in this ceaseless quest have been men of science, men of goodwill, men with a zest for adventure, and rogues with a lust for gold. If this likeness of me, Tupac Amaru, be violated by plunderers, then will the wrath of Viricocha bring to them a swift and certain doom which will pursue them to their graves and beyond. But I've come here to this temple and to you for help. We, we've got to help Nancy. Or the woman you love, there can be no help. If she keeps the mask of Tupac Amaru, she is doomed forever. Our mystery drama, The Mask of Tupac Amaru, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Murray Burnett and stars Ruby Dee and Michael Wager. preoccupation with the mystery of death and the possibility of life hereafter has made graveyards a favorite setting for eerie stories of the supernatural. Graveyards have also been the site of archaeological explorations to satisfy man's curiosity about his past. Our tale involves an archaeological expedition, the grave of a legendary hero of the Incas, and an ancient curse. However, it couldn't have a more modern setting for a start. The elegant lobby of the luxurious Hotel Savoy in Cusco, Peru. Nancy! Nancy! Carlos! What are, you, what are you doing in Peru? No, don't answer. Your being here at this time makes everything perfect. Darling, you've made me so happy, I'm afraid something, something's going to happen to spoil it. You're so right. I can't wait to tell you what's been... What? What do you mean? I visited the dig. And I was happy to see that no one had been in the grave yet. Nancy, you're not to go into that grave. I, I can't believe what I'm hearing. I just finished a press conference and Professor Brady practically gave me the entire credit for discovering the grave site. And the man I'm going to marry tells me I'm not to go into the grave. Professor Brady didn't do you any favor when he handed the credit to you. All right, Carlos. It's obvious you didn't come here because you missed your fiancé or because you wanted to congratulate me on the discovery. So what brought you down? Have you really uncovered the grave of tomorrow? We're not absolutely certain, but I think so. I really do. You see, this isn't part of the regular dig which we started west of M Machu Picchu. It's in the Urubama Valley, but off the tourist track. And one day I saw this indentation, and I had a feeling, a strong feeling, and I got permission from the professor to do some digging. We hadn't got very far before I realized that my hunch was right, and I was onto something tremendous. You don't understand what you've done, do you? Evidently, you don't. I'm going to be famous. Think of it, Carlos. A graduate student stumbling upon... A graduate student who evidently doesn't know much about Incan history. Oh, really? Perhaps you'd like to teach me. Somebody had better. Before you walk into the grave of Tupac Amaro and sign your own death warrant. <laughs> I must insist that anyone not officially connected with this expedition move away from the entrance to the grave. Uh, uh, Professor Brady, Professor Brady, I must talk to you. Uh, who are you? Uh, Professor, I'd like you to meet my fiancé, Carlos Ucaila. Ucaila? That proud Inca name alone would entitle you to be present at this historic moment. Professor, I, I must insist that Nancy doesn't enter the grave of Tupac Amaro. Well, we're not yet certain that... This grave is indeed the burial place of Amaru. Ah, but there is a chance. I don't understand. Uh, this is Nancy's... Uh, he's worried about the curse, Professor. 
Well, the whole story of Amaru and the curse may very well be a myth. With all due respect, Professor, you're not going to claim that the rebellion Tupac Amaru led was a myth. Well, certainly not. That his death and savage mutilation at the hands of the Spanish conquerors. An historical fact. But you must be aware that everything after his death is open to question. The whole story of the Incans stealing his mutilated corpse from the Spaniards and burying it secretly along with a curse from the great god Viricocha must be treated as mythology. You can treat it any way you like. But Nancy is not going in there. Surely I think that should be her decision. Nancy? Of course I'm going. No, you are not. Carlos, you've embarrassed me enough. Now you'll either let me go, or I'll have Senor Alvarado and his policemen put you under arrest. Yes? It's me, Nancy. Please forgive me, Carlos. Nancy, was it the grave of Tupac Amaro? You haven't heard? I've been sitting here in my room thinking. Oh, Carlos, it was. And in the grave was the most magnificent death mask I've ever seen. Do you realize what this is going to mean to me? Do you? You're still angry because of the rotten way I behaved, but I've already asked you to forgive me, and if you do, I'll I'll forgive you. Forgive me? For what? For being a silly, superstitious idiot. There was nothing inscribed on the mask? Of course there was. Superb hieroglyphic writing. Did you translate it? Well, not completely. It's in Huichuan. And I was wondering if you'd give us some help with the translation. Here's a copy I made. I don't want to have anything to do with it. Carlos, please, for my sake. You know, ever since you came here, I have the feeling I'm I'm not talking to Carlos Ucayla, but to a stubborn Incan Indian desperately clinging to beliefs that were exploded 500 years ago. I don't like the idea of your being in danger. Oh, come off it, Carlos. You're far too intelligent to believe in the supernatural power of some words written by some old Indian on a five-century-old death mask. To say you believe that is... is... It's the height of idiocy. You... Have no fear of words written on the most sacred relic in Incan history. Give me the paper. Thank you, Carlos. I appreciate it. I'd rather not take thanks for this. If this likeness be violated by plunderers, then will the wrath of Viricocha bring to them a swift and certain doom which will pursue them to their graves and beyond. Well, really impressive, isn't it? Are you enough impressed so that you'll return the mask? Carlos, you know very well that's not possible. It now belongs to the government. It belongs to the people who made it. And I swear by whatever God you want to believe in that I'm going to give it back to them and save you in spite of yourself. Who are you? What do you mean by coming into my room? How did you get... Softly, Professor Brady. Uh, Here's my card. And accept my apologies for the intrusion. Francisco Fortune. (laughs) That's obviously not your name. And whatever it is you're selling, I'm not buying, so get out. Mm. As a scientist, Professor Brady, you should know better than to leap to conclusions. I'm not a seller. I'm a buyer. Then you're certainly in the wrong room. I have nothing to sell. Once again, an erroneous conclusion. How about the death mask of Tupac Amaru? You're here to ask me to sell you the mask? You must be a madman. Mm. Aren't all collectors slightly mad? If you're really a collector, you would know that you're wasting your time. My dear professor, courtesy requires that you hear me out. Put that gun away. As you see, as a silencer. But I do require your attention, and I intend to get it. Go ahead. Good. I'm determined to have the mask of Tupac Amaru. I will, of course, pay for it. You know very well that the theft of the mask will set off shockwaves of earthquake proportion. Any participation by me of such a scheme, no matter how remote would be discovered, and my life would be ruined. No, I would never allow that to happen. You couldn't prevent it. 
If I can prove to you that I can, would you go along with the deal? I believe I've already given you my answer. I have something to show you that may make you change your mind. No, not the gun. No, no, no. Some art object which had been created by an employee of mine. Now, with your permission, I'll ask him in. Topa! Professor, this is Topa, a pure-blooded Incan. How do you do? Unfortunately, he's mute. But, Professor, he speaks with his hands. May I answer the phone? Of course. But remember, I still have this gun. Hello? Professor Brady? Speaking? This is Carlos Ucala. You may remember we met at the grave site. Oh, of course. Nancy's young man. Can I help you? Can we meet? You mean now? As soon as possible. Uh, what do you wish to see me about? The mask. The death mask of Tupac Amaro. Oh, yes. You were deeply worried about the curse. I still am, and that's what I want to talk to you about. Well, give me a ring tomorrow at the office. Professor Brady, couldn't we set up an appointment now? It, 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 it could be any time at your convenience. I'm afraid not. Call me. Before we were interrupted, you were telling me about uh, Topa. Oh, yes, yes. I was saying that Topa is a genius. He makes replicas of works of art that simply cannot be distinguished from the originals. You mean he's a forger? No, you can't use the word forger for Topa's work. But you won't have to take my word for it. He's brought samples along. Topa, open your knapsack and show the professor some of your things. I assume you wouldn't have gone to all this trouble unless uh, you had a buyer. Well, I'm happy to see that your thinking has become more positive. You deserve an honest answer. At the moment, I have no buyer. Oh, yes, Topa, that's a good choice. I'm sure the professor will recognize that figurine. I certainly do. The original is in the La Cojorera Museum in Lima. May I have it? Oh, go on, give it to the professor, Topa. Let him examine it as closely as he likes. A remarkable piece of work. Topa, I think the necklace with the hollow gold beads should be next. Yeah, that's right. Hold it up. I um, don't have to examine it closely. Surely you recognize this fox head? It is of gold, copper, and silver alloy, exactly like the mask of Tupac Amaru. I know it. It's in the Lynn Museum in Stuttgart. I am impressed. Thank you. Not with you, with Topa. You're right. He is an artist. I don't have to see any more. I am not interested. Uh, there is one more piece of Topa's I want you to see. Uh, Topa, uh, please, the head of Atua Halpa. Hand it over. There. Now, Professor... What do you think of that? <laughs> but... But this is no forgery. This is genuine. This is a real head of a... Tuaholpa. May I congratulate you on your expertise, Professor. And now let me point out that for years... You and the world have believed the copy... In the Marmaron Museum... To be genuine. Yes, but... Exactly. I'm sure you see now that we can do business together without you running the slightest risk. Tangled webs of deception are unfortunately not unknown in the art world. Greed has been such a powerful motive that many collectors have chosen to dismiss as nonsense the curses that ancient civilizations have laid down to protect their treasures. Some have proven false, and some have exacted a terrible and tragic price. I shall be back in a moment with Act Two. The discovery of the long-sought grave and death mask of Tupac Gamaru, legendary Incan hero, has electrified the art world. It has also brought Professor Brady an unwelcome visitor, a self-acknowledged art thief who calls himself 
Francisco Fortune and his Incan employee, a mute named Topa. Fortune has placed before Professor Brady an ingenious scheme for stealing the mask of Tupac Amaru. Well, Professor, what do you think now? I acknowledge that Topa is a genius and you're a resourceful thief, but I am neither. So I wish you gentlemen good night. Think, Professor. You're going to photograph the mask. One photograph. A well-lit close-up is all that Topher needs to make a replica that cannot be told from the original. Then, a quick substitution by you. No one is the wiser, and you're $25,000 richer. Topher seems to be saying that he cannot do it. What? Look at him. He's shaking his head, and I think he's saying no. Am I right, Topher? Topa will do as I say. I think not. I believe Topa's more afraid of the curse of Vinicocha than he is of you. Topa, do you remember the people who tore out your tongue and made you mute? <laughs> yes, I see you do. You know that these people are still very angry with you. Just think what they would do to you if I told them you were no longer useful to me. Oh, stop torturing him, Fortune. It's not going to make any difference in my decision. Well, I was merely showing you, Professor, that everything can be arranged. You will make the mask for me, Topa. Ah, fine. You see, Professor, in order to get what you want, all you have to know is the pressure points. There's no pressure you can exert that would make me change my mind. A pity. Come, Topa. We will leave Professor Brady to dream of the $25,000 he could have had. I have better things to dream of. Oh, by the way, Fortune. Yes? Unlike Topa, you seem to have no fear of the curse of Viricocha. I, my dear Professor... I wasn't the one who desecrated the grave of Tupa Amaru. It was you, Professor. And if there really is something to the curse, I think you'd be the one who fears. Professor Brady's office? It's me, darling. Where were you this morning? I waited in the coffee shop for almost an hour. Oh, I'm sorry, but I had to rush here because the professor went out to the dig. Amara's grave? No, no, the other dig. He still has hopes for something there, and he's been neglecting it. I should have left word, but... He, he made an appointment with me. Oh, he told me you were going to call, and he asked me to handle it. Damn fool. Well, you can call Brady a lot of things, but hardly that. Nancy, can you meet me? When? Right away. I'm sorry, darling, but the professor left me to mind the store and... Okay, okay, I'll be up in 15 minutes. Carlos. Carlos, oh, Carlos. Nancy, I don't want any arguments, no objections. Just get your jacket on and come with me. What? We're getting married. Oh, wow. You mean today? No, tomorrow back in L.A. I've made all the arrangements by phone and I don't mind telling you they cost a fortune. Then I'm sorry you wasted your money. Does that mean you don't want to marry me? Oh, Carlos, stop playing games. I have to do something to get you out of Peru. So you decided I was a lovesick little girl who'd be so delighted by the idea of being Mrs. Carlos Ukaila, I'd forget everything else and jump on the first plane out of here. Okay. What will get you on a plane? My own ticket. It's dated two weeks from today. Where, uh, where's the mask? It's in the safe behind me. May I see it? Why do you want to see it? <laughs> Curiosity. I'll never have an, an opportunity to get this close to it again. It'll be locked away behind glass in the National Museum, surrounded by guards. Oh, darling, I do love you. Well, what brings that up? Oh, I love you because you're so darn good looking and also because you're so transparent. I love you, too. But how about letting me see the mask? So you can snatch it out of my hand, run out of here and take it to... Where, where would you take it, Carlos? Yeah, I did never occur to me, but I think... About it, it's not bad. It's the lesser of two evils. You're talking about the curse. What else? 
I know what's happened to you, darling. Believe me, I know and I understand. I don't need understanding. I need you to open your mind. We both want the same thing, then. I'll promise to keep mine open if you'll open yours. To what? To the realization that you've come back to the country of your ancestors. You're surrounded by the culture of centuries. The whole atmosphere affects you. It affects me, and I don't have ancestors here. Well, if you understand that, then you... Then you understand how I feel about the curse. Of course I understand, but that doesn't mean I believe in it. Why not? You can't understand how a primitive people ever managed to construct a sanctuary like Machu Picchu. But the fact is they did, and it still stands so... You so you want me to discard my heritage of scientific knowledge and become a fear-ridden, superstitious fool running from a meaningless curse. In other words, you believe in everything Incan, except their religion. Religion is one thing. Superstition, another. You wish to see me, senor? You are the Vilak Umu of this temple? You do me too much honor. I am a priest, and I am in charge. But alas, these noblest of priests, the Vilak Umus, were wiped out a few years after the conquest. Uh, may I have your name? Carlos Ucaila. I am Manco Hoina. Welcome to the temple, brother. I hope I will still be welcome when you hear what brings me to you. The death mask of Tupac Amaru. You, you know? The whole world knows. Why shouldn't we? Although I'm an American, you called me brother. I I expect that you will talk with me as such. I need your help. To protect your beloved? Exactly. Suppose... Suppose I somehow managed to have the mask returned. What to you, perhaps, would... Would that have any effect on the curse? You know as well as I that forgiveness would be granted by Vidicocha. And only by him. Thanks. That's all I wanted to hear. Uh, one moment. Where are you going? To see Professor Brady. If I can talk to him, I'm I, I'm sure I can make him see the truth. In that case, you had better hurry. I've been informed that the professor was taken to the hospital a few hours ago. My name is Dr. Johannes Schmidt. I'm in charge of this hospital. And before I turn you over to the police, I'm giving you an opportunity to explain your actions. How oh, very kind of you, Doctor. But before you do any turning over to the police, let me inform you that if you do, I'll sue you and this hospital for every... I'm trying to be helpful, but... Then give me Professor Brady's room number and a pass. He's in your present state. I wouldn't permit you to visit any patient in this hospital. But I can save Professor Brady's life. Are you a physician? Oh, good grief, I'll... We sit here talking. Brady is dying. The professor was admitted because he suffered a bad gash on his foot when he was bathing this morning. A slight infection set in, and it was thought best to hospitalize him. He's hardly dying. Is that why no visitors are permitted? You still haven't told me that you're a doctor. That's immaterial. Professor Brady is being punished for plundering the grave of Tupac Amaro. Fascinating theory. If I could talk with Professor Brady for ten minutes, only ten minutes, I think I could make him see that there's only one way to save himself. Hasn't he already brought the wrath of God down upon him by taking the death mask? But if if he returned it, gave it back to the Incans, he would cleanse himself. No. I'm afraid I can't let you see him. Why not? Because you would only upset him. You'd rather have him die. There's very little chance of that. Dr. Schmidt. Dr. Schmidt, life support unit, third floor emergency room. Life support unit, third floor emergency room. Dr. Schmidt. Hey, coach, uh, I beseech thee, show your servant, Manko Hoyan, the way. Manko, Manko, oh. Oh, I, I, I beg your pardon. I apologize for interrupting your prayers. Oh, you are forgiven, brother. I was sorry to hear that you failed. I was never given the chance to fail. Professor Brady died while I was trying to get the doctor to let me see him. Perhaps it was willed that way by Vicocha. 
Well, whatever it was, it's going to be a powerful argument to persuade Nancy to do the right thing about the mask. You have not yet spoken with her? I can't find her. The hotel says she went out. She she never showed up at the hospital. I checked at both the digs and she hasn't been there. So I came to you. For? Information. I thought you would know where she is. This is a temple, brother. A place of worship. You knew Brady was ill before I did. You'd already heard of his death before I got here. In your eyes, the theft of the mask and the desecration of the grave would justify any action, including the kidnapping of an American who despoiled the grave. The Kocha does not require my help to carry out his judgment. Brother, I... I beg you, tell me where she is. So that you can then inform the police... You must know that I cannot have the police here. I swear I... I won't go to the police. I just want to save that girl. Would that not be interfering with a just punishment as decreed by Viricocha? I... I honestly don't know. Isn't it possible that Viricocha led me here and it's his wish that you tell me about the girl? You will find her in the house of number 15, Avenida Arequipa. It has been said that women are wiser than men because they know more and understand less. Carlos Ucaila is convinced that the girl he loves knows more but understands less than he does about the power of ancient Incan curses. If he's right, her life is in danger. If he's wrong, well, that has to be saved for Act Three. Saving people in spite of themselves is a task to which missionaries have devoted their energies over the centuries. The fact that such efforts have often backfired has in no way dampened the enthusiasm of the visionaries. In our story, Carlos Ucala's hope of saving his beloved ran high as he approached the door of number 15, Avenida Arequipa, in Cusco, Peru. Ah, Senor Ucala, you're expected. Oh, no, please come in. I've come for my fiance Nancy Littleton. And she's been anxiously awaiting your arrival. She didn't believe us when we told her you'd be here. Uh, this way, please. You're taking me to her? Indirectly. Now, sit down. Grab some coffee. I want to see Nancy. All in good time. The first, we have some business to discuss. Miss Littleton is an important member of the expedition. Her disappearance is going to cause an uproar if I found her, the police will. Eventually, they will. But perhaps they'll find her corpse. Are you fat? Please. Please. Nothing rash. You can't afford a temper. Put the gun down. I'll show you what I can afford. Senor Lucayla, you're at a disadvantage. I know everything about you, and you know nothing about me. I know you're a thug. My name is Francisco Fortune, and I am a collector. I want the mask of Tupac Amaru, and I mean to have it. Good luck. I don't want it. I already know that. I know about the curse, and I also know you believe in it, and the senorita doesn't. I agree with her, and that makes your interest and mine identical. Okay. What's your proposal? That you replace the original mask with an absolutely perfect imitation. You're, you're asking me to steal the mask, and I'm not a thief. But I can guarantee that the greatest expert in the world won't know the mask you substitute isn't the original. Since you've got it all figured out, why do you need me? Because your relationship with the senorita will make the substitution immeasurably easier. Yes, but you don't mention the fact that if anything should go wrong, I am the fall guy. Oh, why look on the downside? Think. You take a small risk. 
you save your fiancé's life. A tiny subterfuge, and she remains happy in the belief that science has given the lie to superstition. You mean I don't tell her about the switch? Honesty has destroyed more men than a bubonic plague. Professor Brady was also an honest man. If I could have talked to him, I, I could have saved him. Have you seen tonight's paper? No. Yeah, take it with you. Now, I, I call your attention to the box on the front page. The item about the photographer. What will it take to convince you? First, Brady, now the man who photographed the mask. What, what more proof do you want? Professor Brady died of an infection. The photographer was run over and killed by a car. Hundreds of people are killed by cars every day. You want me to believe that this was decreed by Vidi Kocha? Don't you see? I can't accept that. Why not? Because to admit that means turning the clock back 300 years. Oh, darling, trust me. Trust my instincts. And abandon mine. Oh, what are we talking about? Instincts and philosophy when the subject really is love. I love you, but... But... I don't like the future I see. I love you and I love my work... But you know as well as I that every dig is going to have some ancient superstition connected with it. Not with Fiddy Kocha. Please, please return the mask. No. All right. Then have you thought about how you're going to get out of here? When I saw you, I was naive enough to believe that you'd come to rescue me. Who was it who knew where I was? The, the priest at the old Huacan Temple. And how did he know? I don't know. Then let me tell you. He knew because he's involved in it. I don't believe that. You haven't been able to think since you came to Peru. You figure there's some strange power in the curse. But, but you don't think the priest of a Hawakan temple would do anything to get his hands on that mask. And so would the man who risked kidnapping you. They're in it together. I know for a fact that they're not. Fortune has asked me to steal a mask for him. Why would he think you'd do that? Because... He has got you as a hostage. Then tell him I won't give up the mask. And you won't consider stealing it. And he has to let me go because I'm of no use to him. He knows I love you. You've never stolen anything in your life. If you go through this, we're finished. I never want to see you again. And uh, now, senor... Now that you've convinced yourself how the senorita feels, we do our deal. I'm listening. You're so clever I can smell your cunning from here. Mm -hmm. You had better hope so. Because the success of our venture depends upon my cleverness. <laughs> That's what bothers me. I don't like the idea of having to spend the rest of my life in a Peruvian prison. What you fail to realize is the depth of my desire for the mask. I must have it. <laughs> you see, it's almost become an obsession. I see. Therefore, I must take every precaution to ensure your success. Huh. Yeah. This is the key to the late Professor Brady's office. We took it from the Senorita's handbag. And I suppose the mask is just lying on his desk. The mask is in the safe in his office until it is transferred to the museum. Well, then we can forget it. I'm no safe cracker. These numbers are the combination to the safe. Also from Nancy. Also. She'll have a lot to hate me for. One must be alive to hate. You do have a knack for pressing the right buttons. How do I get into the building? You know their guards. Two. On Thursday, at 11 o'clock, will be Jesu Alicante and Ramon Merona. They are not well paid. Uh, by the government, that is. Will they stay bribed? For two reasons. They will not be paid until after you've accomplished what you went there to do. I promise them that. You seem completely confident about that. Uh, there's someone you must meet. Uh, Topa! Uh, Topa, come here. Bring the case. The Topa is a genius, an unequaled forger of artworks of all kinds. 
I also know that I can trust him absolutely, which is why he will accompany you on Thursday night. No, no, I don't think I like that. At exactly ten minutes to eleven on Thursday night, you will leave your hotel by the side entrance. I don't like the idea of a witness. Come, Senor Kyla. To leave you alone with identical masks presents such a wealth of opportunities for devious dealing that I cannot allow it. It's out of the question. <sighs> All right. At 10 to 11, I leave the hotel by the side entrance. Yes. And... There'll be a taxi cab waiting. It'll be driven by Topa. You'll get in. And from then on, everything will proceed as planned. Is that clear? Perfectly. Also, if any idea of giving the police the address of this house has crossed your mind, you should know that when you leave here, we do also. The house will be empty. Goodbye. And good luck on Thursday, senor. I'm sorry to be so shaky, Topa, but this is way out of my line. Oh, well, so far so good. Everything Fortune said has happened. I haven't even seen the guards. I think you'd better... Yeah, close the door, Topa. Now, for the safe. How about my reading off the combinations to you? I think it'll be faster. Let me hold the flashlight. All right. Fourteen left. Then... Back, pass to zero, to nine, right. And six left. And finally two right. That should do it. That should do it. Try it. Here's the case. Make the switch, we'll get out of here. What's the matter? All right, all right. I, I understand. I, I'll handle it. Topa! Topa! Topa, listen to me. I I also have your blood. If that is Viricocha, he doesn't talk in anger. That is the sound of approval that we hear. Wait, wait. I'll get the mask. <laughs> I can see from your faces that you've been successful. Congratulations. And I have kept my word. Here is your senorita waiting for you. Did... Did you have a storm out here? A storm? No. No thunder? Nothing. Senorita, pay close attention. If you're thinking about announcing to the world the truth of what has happened to the mask, not only do I advise against it, but I am certain that will also be the advice of your fiancé. Carlos is no longer my fiancé, and I couldn't care less about any advice he might offer. Let me say that I agree with you. The whole matter of the curse is silly superstition. Professor Brady died because of an infection that followed his stepping on a piece of glass in his hotel bathroom. That was not... Vili Kocha's doing, but mine. I also saw to it that the glass was impregnated with an exceedingly rare and virulent virus. Now, Signor, I'm sure you wouldn't want anything to happen to your lovely Signorita. Don't think you can frighten me. Topa, the case, please. On my desk. Topa. Show me the mask. Do you get a kick out of torturing him? You know he's afraid to touch it. Uh, oh, yes. Yes, I should have remembered. I'll do it myself. Ah. Oh, exquisite. Truly a marvel of ink and art. If you could feel the softness of the gold, the warmth... As I run my fingers over it, I cannot describe. Give me air. Nancy, I'll hold him. Loosen his, loosen his collar. Please. Is, is he dead? Yes. 
<sighs> well, Nancy, there's the mask in his hand. What do you want to do? Give it to me, please. Here. Topa. Here it is. The death mask of Tupac Amaru. It belongs to you and your people. Take it to them. And Carlos? Yes? Carlos, darling. Let's go home. It's a scientific fact that the Indians of the Peruvian Amazon have a plant that painlessly extracts teeth. When they were told that our method of pulling teeth involves much blood and sometimes even pain, they cried out, but what barbarians? Of course, it would be barbaric to believe that Francisco Fortune's death came about from any but the natural causes of heart failure. But I strongly suspect that there may be some of us just barbaric enough to doubt it. I'll be back shortly. Would you know a workaholic if you saw one? Will airfare restrictions leave you grounded? Can the state where you live affect the state of your health? Is it too late to make money in the unified Europe of 1992? You'd know the answers to all those questions if you'd been reading the Wall Street Journal, America's leading daily business publication. Every business day, the journal tells you what's news and who's news in big business, small business, in real estate, marketing, technology, and the law. The Wall Street Journal gives you all the business news you need in three easy-to-read sections organized to save you time. Subscribe now to the Wall Street Journal and take advantage of this special introductory offer. 12 weeks, just $29.75. Only $29.75 for 12 weeks of the journal. Call toll-free 800-231-1800. Today's Wall Street Journal. Faster, tougher, smarter. Call 800-231-1800 now. Teresa. Hey, Teresa, over here. Maria, Debbie, hey, I'm glad you could make it. What'd you think of the show? It's great. I love that last number. Thanks. I made up the dance steps. You mean you could study that here in college? Sure. You can study choreography and music and writing and acting. You can study just about anything you want in college. Boy, I never thought college could be so much fun. Keep going, keep growing in college. A message from this radio station and the college board. Every day, in every way, I'm getting better and better. That phrase was made famous in the 1920s by a French psychotherapist named Emile Couet. A lot of people swore that by believing it, they were cured. A lot of other people shrugged it off as being effective only on very gullible and not very sick people. What I wonder is, how many people died because they thought, every day I'm getting sicker and sicker. The mind, my friends, the mind can play some strange and powerful tricks. Our cast included Ruby Dee, Michael Wager, Robert Dryden, and Dan Ocko. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. You're listening to an early steam locomotive. A reminder of when it took forever to cross this country. And when people with epilepsy had little hope of a normal life. Today, we use modern transportation, but many Americans still cling to outdated ideas about epilepsy, ideas that haven't kept up with progress. A progress report on epilepsy. One of the most dramatic advances of recent years has been in seizure prevention. Newer drugs and new ways of prescribing the older drugs mean more and more people with epilepsy can be free of seizures and do just about anything anybody else can do. Some serious problems remain, but for the majority, medical progress is making a world of difference. Epilepsy. Find out where we are today. Call the Epilepsy Foundation of America. 1-800-EFA-1000. Remember the number. 1-800-EFA-1000. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time... Pleasant dreams.
It's showdown time of the Big Ten. I'm Dale Conquest. After a slow start, the Michigan Wolverines got it going against Wisconsin. Big spins, fakes. No, he does hand off right up the middle. Tony Bowles breaks through. He's to the 20, 15, breaks it to the left. Five, four, touchdown. 45-yard touchdown run by Tony Bowles. Meanwhile, MSU wanted Iowa to set up the battle for Michigan. An invitation to join Jim Brandstetter and me for all the action today at 3 when the Spartans and Wolverines collide. Michigan football. From ABC News in Washington, this week with David Brinkley. U.S. Soviet relations are tense right now. A Soviet United Nations employee is being held in this country on charges of spying. And an American reporter is being held in Moscow on the same charges. But both sides are still talking about a possible summit between Ronald Reagan and Mikhail Gorbachev sometime this year. We'll be talking about this with our guests. Jean Kirkpatrick, former U.S. ambassador to the United Nations. Paul Warnke, the former director of the Arms Control and Disarmament Agency. And Secretary of State George Shultz. Joining David Brinkley in the questioning will be ABC political analyst George Will and ABC White House correspondent Sam Donaldson. And now from our news headquarters in Washington, David Brinkley. Ambassador Kirkpatrick, Mr. Warnke, thank you both very much.